I'm John Bradshaw. This is It Is Written. Thanks for joining me. Peter was a wealthy tailor who lived in 12th century France. By all accounts, he wasn't a very religious man early in his life, but when he became a Christian, his life took a very dangerous course because Peter dared oppose the most powerful man in all of Europe, a man who had put to death many people like Peter before. And Peter's story opens up to us a fascinating Bible prophecy. I'm in Worms, Germany, the very place where the famous German reformer Martin Luther took a bold and courageous stand against a corrupt medieval church, which demanded that he renounce his belief in salvation by grace. It was just 150 yards or so behind where I'm now sitting that Martin Luther squared off against that medieval church. And he spoke boldly, declaring these words. I cannot and will not recant anything, for to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. Here I stand. I can do no other. So help me God. Luther's courageous faith enabled the Protestant Reformation to sweep across Germany and Europe, forever changing the face of Christianity. It is also here in Worms that you find another much larger monument to Luther. Here you see him as the central figure, and those who assisted in the Reformation surround him. One of these men is Peter Waldo, a wealthy merchant turned preacher. Peter's story and that of his followers is amazing, but it's one that's almost forgotten by the modern Christian church. While this monument places Waldo and Luther close to each other, in real life, this was not the case. In fact, Waldo and Luther never met because Peter Waldo lived more than 300 years before Luther. But it was Waldo's legacy that reached across the centuries to influence Luther and other reformers to faithfully stand for the true gospel. Peter was living in Lyon in France when he gave his life to Jesus and began reading the Bible. His determination to live by the Bible alone put him in direct conflict with the most powerful man in Europe, the Pope of Rome. 12th century Europe was dominated by popes and the priests and kings loyal to them. It was also a time when the church strayed far from the simple gospel. Prophecy had predicted this in Daniel and Revelation. Daniel 7 verse 25, He shall speak pompous words against the Most High, shall persecute the saints of the Most High, and shall intend to change times and law. Then the saints shall be given into his hand for a time, and times, and half a time. Peter and his followers saw this departure from Bible truth, and they began to show from the Bible that many of the church's teachings were not found in Scripture, and in fact, were positively harmful to people. They correctly pointed out that the teaching of purgatory is not in Scripture. They also rejected the veneration of saints. They challenged the Mass and the Catholic Church's authority as being the sole determiner of truth and salvation. Peter ultimately found himself here at the Vatican in 1179 in a meeting with Pope Alexander III. Along with one of his disciples, Peter had to defend his beliefs, beliefs that ultimately were condemned at the Third Lateran Council later that year. And then a few years later in 1184, Peter and his followers were excommunicated from the church. Finally, at the Fourth Lateran Council in 1215, the Waldensians, as they later became known, were declared to be heretics. This put the Waldensians in a very dangerous predicament. They were conscience bound to follow the teachings of Jesus as found in the Bible. But the Roman church, aided by the strong arm of the state, made it impossible for them to do this without risking torture and even death. And this threat was very real. Just a few years before, in the year 1211, the church had begun persecuting the Waldensians when she burned more than 80 of them to death. As the fires of persecution were lit, 
a unique Bible prophecy came to life, helping the Waldensians survive a period of intense persecution. These rugged mountains became their hiding place during long centuries of persecution. The Roman church of that era sought through every possible method to destroy this people's loyal obedience to Scripture. But God had His hand over His faithful servants. In fact, Bible prophecy predicted the precise way God would protect them from their persecutors. We read it in Revelation 12, 14. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So that serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. You see, in a very real way, the earth helped the woman, the church, as she was being persecuted. Those Waldensian Christians refused to compromise their faith in God's Word, even in the face of death. And so the earth helped the woman. They fled to the place that God had prepared for them. Here in the recesses of these grand mountains, in their valleys, peaks, and caves, the Waldensians were free to worship God according to the Scriptures, where no pope or priest could menace them. I'll have more in just a moment. In Matthew 4.4, the Word of God says, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every Word is a one-minute Bible-based daily devotional presented by Pastor John Bradshaw and designed especially for busy people like you. Look for Every Word on selected networks or watch it online every day on our website, itiswritten.com. Receive a daily spiritual boost. Watch Every Word. You'll be glad you did. Thanks for stopping by. Here's a Bible verse that spells out the reality of growing in faith in God. Malachi 3.3 says, And he shall purify the sons of Levi, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. You want to know the uncomfortable truth? We need purifying. That's often why difficulties come our way, because God knows we need them to refine us. Few people enjoy trials, but the truth is trials are often the best thing that can happen to us because they refine us. They drive us to God in prayer. They help us see our spiritual weak points, and they encourage us to grow and learn new habits and attitudes. No, I'm not campaigning for more trials in my life. But when we see that we need God to purify us, we'll react differently when trials come. I'm John Bradshaw for It Is Written. Let's live today by every word. This is It Is Written, and I'm John Bradshaw. Thanks for joining me. The Waldensian Christians weren't content to keep the gospel to themselves in their mountain retreats here in northern Italy. They understood how the church's superstitious teachings were destroying people's lives, and even worse, how they were destroying people's hope of eternal life. They saw multitudes of people across Europe struggling under false teachings. They saw people trying to achieve salvation by relying on their own works, afflicting their bodies through wearisome pilgrimages, health-destroying fasts, painful penances, and even self-imposed tortures. People living in the Dark Ages were emotionally burdened, laboring under the misconception that the God of heaven is a hateful, a vengeful God who inflicts the most awful punishments upon people for the least infractions of the church's rules. The Waldensians longed to see their fellow human beings understand the true gospel of Jesus Christ and enjoy the peace that comes from that, so beautifully explained in these words from the Apostle Paul. Ephesians 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hundreds of years before Martin Luther discovered this truth, the Waldensians were living it 
They knew the blessing of relying on God's grace and goodness and Jesus' perfect life for salvation and not on their own good works. Just like it says in Romans chapter 3. Romans 3, 10 through 12. There is none righteous, no, not one. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. The Bible is very clear that our own good works can never save us. In fact, Isaiah wrote that our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. The only way we can hope to go from unrighteousness to righteousness is by accepting that we are sinners and by believing that God loves us just as we are. Jesus came into this world to die for us and pay the penalty for our sins while we were sinners. And there's nothing we can do to earn the favor of God. We can respond to the favor of God, but we can never earn it. For when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 6 through 8. It was for the purpose of sharing this wonderful news of salvation that the Waldensian believers established little schools such as this one. Here they trained their pastors and sent them out as missionaries to the rest of Europe. This school was known as the College of the Barbs, and it's still remote even today, hidden way back up here in the mountains. And even though it was built centuries ago, its stone walls still stand as a witness of the unshakable faith these people had in Jesus and the Bible. The word Bab meant uncle, which is what the Waldensians used to call their pastors, uncle. Now, this was in stark contrast to the practice of the Roman church, which would refer to its priests as father, something the Waldensians understood to be condemned by what Jesus said in Matthew 23 and verse 9, when he said, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Here, the young Waldensian pastors would train under the more experienced barbs. They would study scripture around this table. And since the printing press had not yet been invented, they hand copied the Bible and translated it into the common language. Then they would go out from this place disguised as peddlers and merchants. Some went as students to the universities for three years serving as missionaries. They traveled throughout Europe with their hand-copied scriptures hidden in the lining of their clothes or in their bags. Very carefully, they would share portions of scripture with people they thought were receptive. Often, they would secretly leave a portion of scripture for someone to find. And that little fragment of scripture would beam a glorious light into the darkened hearts and lives of people who had been so long kept in bondage. Wherever they went, they left a revival behind them. Now this angered the priests who lost their superstitious stranglehold on the people. And if the Waldensian pastor was caught, he knew his fate. First, he'd be tortured in an attempt to get information about where his people lived. And then he'd be killed in the most painful of ways. Over a period of several hundred years, those loyal to the popes of Rome invaded these peaceful valleys. The Waldensians were hunted like wild animals. Men, women, even children were ruthlessly murdered. No one was spared. During these times, the Waldensians moved higher up these valleys, often hiding in caves like the cave behind me. In fact, hiding in the cave behind me. It was here that the Waldensians fled. Here they hid. Here they worshipped. 
here they prayed, and all too often, tragically, here they died. It was in this very cave, and other caves just like it throughout this area, that the Waldensian believers hid as their persecutors sought to find them. Maybe the cave can hold a hundred people, perhaps a few more, but not many more. You can imagine them huddled together, waiting in faith for the persecution time to pass. And they certainly weren't here because it was comfortable. It's cold in here and damp. The walls are damp. The, the, there's water dripping down constantly from above. Underfoot, it's just dirt. What isn't dirt is stone or rocks. And the ceiling is high up there, the stone ceiling arching over us. It's a lot like a cathedral in here. Many were not able to escape the savagery of their persecutors. History records that this group of people stood up against some of the worst persecutions any human beings have ever endured. And they did so for hundreds and hundreds of years. And all because of their biblical faith in Jesus. Faith of our fathers living still In spite of dungeon fire and sword Oh, how our hearts beat high with joy Whenever we hear that glorious word Faith of our fathers, holy faith We will be true to Thee till death Our fathers chained in prison dark Were still in power and conscience free In the 1520s and 30s, the Waldensians decided to investigate the stories they'd been hearing about Christians from Germany and other places who were returning to the Bible and were rejecting the traditions of Rome. So some of their pastors traveled north into Switzerland and Germany and met with the reformers. They shared with the Protestant leaders about their ancient faith and their long dark night of persecution. Both parties were shocked. The reformers, because they had no idea that there was a people that had been able to resist Rome's tyranny. And the Waldenses, to discover that they were not alone, that there were others who also believed the gospel of salvation by grace. On October the 12th, 1532, Protestant leaders from across Europe came here to the Waldensian valleys 
and met with the spiritual leaders of the Waldensians during a six-day Bible conference in the little village of Shanfaran. This monument memorializes this historic event when the church in the wilderness, so long in hiding, joined with the Reformation, a Reformation that would take its faith from the Bible, the Bible alone. One of their agreements was that the Waldenses would help the Reformed churches translate the Bible. So the ancient manuscripts of the Old and New Testaments that the Waldenses had preserved for centuries were now translated into French. And the worldly poor Waldenses took up an offering from their meager resources to pay for its printing. In this way, the Waldenses gave the light of truth to the rest of Europe. You see, these faithful believers understood something that we need to be reminded of today. True saving faith cannot be possessed outside the Bible. Church traditions and forms can only take a person so far. Religious ceremonies and customs do not save a person. Real saving faith, the type of faith that's able to withstand the fires of persecution, the sort of faith that Jesus said will lead to eternal life, is found in the Word of God. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 10 and verse 17, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's why it's so vital that we come to the Bible and get to know it for ourselves. It's more important than I can stress that we take the time necessary to read God's Word, to study God's Word, and hear His voice speaking to us individually, and God will do that in the Bible. If it's peace you need, you need look no further than the Holy Scriptures. If you're looking for love, you'll find the one who loves the most in God's Word. If you're looking for freedom from guilt and forgiveness from sin, you can read about Calvary and God's perfect plan of forgiveness, a plan He devised especially for you. The Bible contains everything that we need for life and love and hope and faith. And the Waldensians understood that. Your Father God, your Creator and Originator, is also the God of the future. In His ability to tell us what is still ahead, God reminds us of His sovereignty and power over all things. To help us to trust Him, God has provided amazing evidence of His reliability and the reliability of His Word. Today, I'd like to send you a booklet that demonstrates how God foretold world events with absolute accuracy thousands of years in advance. This booklet is called, Can God Be Trusted? And it's absolutely free. Just call 1-800-253-3000 and ask for, Can God Be Trusted? If the line's busy, please do keep on trying. Or you can write to us at It Is Written, P.O. Box 6, Chattanooga, Tennessee 37401. We'll mail a free copy to your address in North America. It Is Written is a faith-based ministry, and your support makes it possible for us to share God's good news with the world. Your tax-deductible gift can be sent to the address on your screen or through our website at itiswritten.com. Thank you for your continued prayerful support. Again, our toll-free number is 800-253-3000 and our web address is itiswritten.com. Peter Waldo and his fellow Waldensians are the hidden heroes of the Reformation. They remained faithful to God throughout one of the darkest periods of persecution in all of history. That's why it's so incredibly appropriate that Martin Luther and Peter Waldo are united here on this monument in Worms, Germany, even though they were separated by 350 years of history. You see, they both understood that the Bible and the Bible alone is the basis of our faith. Some of these men and women depicted here at this monument died for their faith in Jesus Christ. It might not be that God is calling you to die for Him today. But it's certainly true 
that God is calling you to live for Him today. Can you do that? Can you make that decision? That decision that the Bible, the Word of God, will be the foundation for your life. That the God of the Bible, the Creator of the Bible, can create in you a new heart. That the Savior of the Bible can take away your sins and give you heaven's forgiveness in the place of your guilt. Can you make the decision today that faith in God will be the cornerstone of your life and that you will allow the power of God into your life to make you what you could never make yourself and to keep you in a way that you could never keep yourself. These believed in the power of the Word of God and you can experience the power of the Word of God today. Let's pray together now. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the example given us by these great heroes of faith, some of the hidden heroes. We perhaps don't really appreciate what others before us have done to deliver to us access to the Word of God, freedom to worship, and the privilege of knowing you. Lord, while in this world the vast majority of us have freedom to read what we want to read and worship how we want to worship, I pray that guided by your Spirit, we wouldn't squander that opportunity. But lead us to know Jesus, the Savior, truly according to the Bible. Give us the freedom that the Bible promises us, that we can walk not in darkness, but in your marvelous light. We look forward to the day when Jesus is going to return. I pray the day would be soon. We look forward to eternity with you. And we thank you for this promise, for this great hope. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, remember, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God.